to another episode of Legends of the Giant Isle, the homebrew Fifth Ed D&D campaign uh, in which we are exploring the world of Ilthvater in the uh, place called Omesha. The island of Eskis, that's kind of in the wrong order for all of that, but that's okay. If you knew that already, then welcome back. If you're new to this, we're in the middle of a campaign, so uh, <laughs> you might go back and watch the previous, I don't even know how many, 18 episodes, I think, something like that. Welcome. I am your host, and I am the GM, and world builder, and confusion master, and so much more. I am not being caffeinated one. There's somebody got a vacuum cleaner suddenly all around them. I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, but I will introduce uh, my players, or rather they'll introduce themselves, starting left to right. My name is Pat. I'm playing Silas Marsh, cultist delusionist. And he's muted. And he's muted. I, I couldn't press my button. Uh... I am Marie. Uh, I am playing Annie, and I need to go find out what the cat just knocked over. <laughs> We're having a lot of issues with cats today. Mm. All right, and hi, I'm Max, and I'm playing Medric, half orc cleric. All right. Well, cats will be cats. We all know this. My thighs are also getting punctured every second by a cat right now. <laughs> Not pleasant. Well, that's the way. That's the way it goes, I guess. Party. <laughs> That's uh, Bisqui, right? Yep. Cat named Cracker. <laughs> right. Maybe we'll have more cats uh, make an appearance here in a moment. We'll wait until Annie makes it back to her seat. I think it's actually my upstairs neighbors. You cat knock over your upstairs is... neighbors. It's like some sort of crime. <laughs> 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 well, let us uh, recall where we were at. After the battle with the Sea Devils, the town of Eilthvater slowly began to adjust to its new normal. A continuous, sunless, overcast sky, often breaking out into heavy winds, pounding rain, rumbling thunder, and streaks of lightning. The storm spread through the entire bay, running from the edge of Cape Raven to just before the lighthouse at Colpack Point, and as far along the royal road as to just enter the Hillevald Forest. A couple of weeks have passed since that battle. The town guard was devastated. People were afraid to go outside, expecting another attack at any moment, but none came. Medric led the effort to clear the debris away from the fallen Temple of Ignis, but few seemed keen to rebuild anything hiding still from the possibility of a return. The fate of the errant widow was discovered when a couple of its crew made their way to the town to find Gaetano. The ship was not able to come into the bay, but made landfall to the south. Gaetano left with them to check on the ship and decided where they're going to go next. The group learned a bit more about Dr. Marigold and his business. He has a small storm, a storefront, where he sells all manner of oils, salves, dried herbs, and potions for pain relief and tonics for relaxing muscles. They also pursued him to find out more about his other business, dealing with the dead. In particular, Medric wanted to speak with a deceased resident found near where the sea devils stole the vase. The dead woman revealed that the vase was, to her, nothing more than pretty, but when she mentioned the vase came from a trader named Clockwinder, Marigold recognized him. An acquirer of rare goods, he called him. He also recognized the writing on the vase. Ancient Athlonian. The name of a long-dead, well, some might say tyrant. Taraz Nakma Daugul. As he spoke the name, a chill wind blew into the world. And that's where we'll resume at the moment. Still in this lower level of this old warehouse-type building where it seems the stones are good for keeping the dead somewhat on chill. Marigold still seems somewhat disturbed by the cold wind, even though he's the one who said the name. What would you like to do? I forgot about the cold wind, so I'm just writing that down. <laughs> 
this is really Medrick's thing, so Silas isn't uh, isn't doing much. He's just watching. Uh, Doctor Sarah Draffin here. I, you, you, it, it happens from time to time. I, I really have some other business to attend to. So, if you'll excuse me, uh, perhaps um, we are done for today. Yeah, I guess. Does he seem anxious? Uh, he seems a little anxious for certain. That much is fairly obvious. Uh. uh I'm going to go. <laughs> this is creeping me out. Yeah, I mean, we're pretty far underground. I'm not sure how a draft could come in. Does it feel like an evil draft or just like a regular draft? What does an evil draft feel like? It's a chill that runs know. down your spine and raises those little hairs that react to unseen dangers. But... There's nothing around you that you can see. In fact, it's gone almost instantaneously for you, that natural warmth your body maintains, far above most, most mortals, dismisses it pretty quickly. But you know, I just point out we're surrounded by corpses. Technically surrounded by rooms in which there are corpses, but yes. It's, it's a... uh, That's kind of why I want to get out. I'm starting to get the heebie-jeebies. Dr. Uh, yeah, Marigold hands, uh, I think Medrick is the one who held it, but hands the, the vase back to you uh, quite quickly and then starts to usher the three of you out of his workspace, kind of gesturing towards the door. It's been very interesting talking to you, but I do really have some things to do. Uh, the dead don't stay uh, fresh for long enough, it seems. And if I don't attend to some of them, including the one you spoke to, it's going to get rather smelly in here. Yeah, I suppose it's already pretty smell. Like it's already pretty bad right now. Anyway, I'll let you get to work, and we'll make our way to where it's thanks less. Thanks okay. for your help, though. Oh, it was um, interesting, to be sure. He hesitates by the door as he kind of shoves you out. If you go looking for Clockwinder, just a, a note of caution. He's not generally a dangerous sort. But he is clever, and he likes his privacy. He does make deals, however, so just keep that in mind. All right. Aside from that, uh, let's see. I think I seem to recall that Annie has the highest passive perception. I, I, I know I wrote it down somewhere. The problem is I wrote it down somewhere. Um, yeah, I think Silas has eleven. 11. Yeah, none of us have a very good perception. Okay, uh, we'll have Annie and Silas both make a uh, a um, okay, perception perception check. I can imagine. I got plus two perception. Yeah, so he's got a twelve passive. Oh, actually, oh. then then never mind. It will be oh. Medric to roll. I don't know why I thought Annie might, but. <laughs> Money, though. Your other character. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, right. The other one had eyes wide open in the back of her head. Yes. I'm sad, though, because I rolled a natural 19. <laughs> okay. How did Medric roll? 14. 14? Okay. Uh, Medric, you're you're still kind of adjusting to the, the idea and try, things are running through your head. Annie, you notice that Marigold, as he's ushering you out, uh, seems to look beyond you to across the street, uh, kind of behind you. The shadows are yeah. deep. It's uh, sort of probably mid-afternoon, but it, it's as dark as early night. Hmm. Do I see anything if I look that way? It's a little bit of movement deep in the alley on the opposite side. Uh, probably a person standing there. But they're in darkness. I kind of scurry over in that direction. Okay. And he starts striding Annie, across the street. Power walk. <laughs> I can exactly see Annie doing a power walk, actually. That's a that's that's a perfect image. 
Uh, whoever is there seems to move and run off in the opposite direction. Further down the alley, away from you. You can make another perception check, though. Natural 17, so 18. As they pass sort of between the gaps in the alley uh, and the buildings, a little bit of light uh, covers over them. And from that, you can make out uh, from the clothing, it appears to be a woman uh, dressed in simple clothing. It looks like uh, blue and white, roughly. But the colors are really hard to see at this point, um, scurrying away. Nothing fancy about the clothing. Nothing seems to glitter in the lights. But they are moving quickly, uh, hiking up the skirts and running away. Do I see her hair as best as I can? <laughs> They're wearing a, a a bonnet, so you can't really see any hair. Cool. Um. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if it'd be enough to go out following them too much, but I, I might follow them one more round. Okay. What are the rest of you doing as Annie kind of takes off? I'm following oh. Annie. Okay. I'm following Medrick. I, mean, I, I can move 90 feet a turn. Yeah. You quickly lose uh, her, or she, she can actually, mm -hmm. yeah, you quickly lose her. Uh, yeah, she so, outruns us easily. Uh, make a uh, survival check, Annie, as the person up ahead seems to make a couple of different turns back and forth across the alleyways. Seven. Seven? Yeah, you come around a corner and you can't see where she's gone. It looks like they must have ducked into another alley somewhere along the way or maybe they doubled back, but they vanished. Clearly someone who knows the town, at least, uh, because you did not know that alley was coming up, and if you didn't know it just from the natural layout, even though this town is a little bit chaotically laid out, they seem to have clearly gone in that direction. Hmm. On our the, the crude map, where's Marigold's office? That is a good question. Er me see if I can do this. <laughs> see if I can bring that up. Uh, how do I get it not to come up as a pop up? And now I can't get it up again. <sighs> I have issues with Roll Twenty and some of the ways that it's doing technology because right <laughs> uh, it does not make it easy to show that. Uh, can't but... you just? Um change to that map because we had that map as a yep I tried giving the pop up the pop up came as an extra window the extra window didn't show up on the X split and once I closed that window I can no longer open that window it's a bug in roll 20 uh, I can only open handouts no, no but like change the actual like map because you had it as a, an actual oh, battle that map. is a very good point thank you very much I will... and that way we can just put a dot on it with the, the drawing Cool. That is a very, very good idea. There we go. All right. Oh, too far. So his spot would be kind of in this area. So I will draw a little red spot approximately. Well, that didn't really work out. Let's try that again. There. Cool. So not far from the public market, which is kind of really just a, a large intersection of large roads where they often set up, especially when caravans come through, they'll set up there. Mm-hmm. So between that and the three battles. Yeah. So that's you know, a fair distance away. Uh, but they were heading off uh, in a sort of, I guess, southeasterly direction off. You probably lost them somewhere in here. And these are, on this map, okay. it's really only the major alleys. There's lots of tiny little alleys and yeah. little distances between buildings. 
they aren't all built uh, yep. in the same or cheek by jowl kind of thing. I would make a mental note of where I lost them. Okay. I will make a physical note of where you lost them. All right. Well, the rest of you, uh, after seeing Annie take off, kind of trailing on behind, <laughs> take a couple of, of turns here and there, and then, oh, there she is. You can barely see her kind of outlined a little bit by a uh, a, uh, a weakly glowing gas lamp that's been lit. They've added more gas lamps to the area, but these are only weak yellowish lights that don't really give a lot of extra illumination. Oh, there you are. What was that about? I saw someone. I lost them, though. Do you think it was the same person or creature that was watching us at the Temple of Ignis? I don't know. I didn't see them, but this person I saw, kind of, they were wearing a blue dress and a bonnet. Huh. It's about as a as detailed as you get. <laughs> it was a simple style of dress that you could you could notice, but it is pretty common. Maybe we'll catch up with her at some point. Maybe. A little bit of thunder rolls off in the distance. A small bit of breeze starts to build up. Hmm. What time is it right now in game time? Like afternoon, evening? Uh, Mid-afternoon, but it's as dark as early evening. You don't see anybody kind of scurrying about very much. On the main road, there are a few people del making deliveries, pushing carts, and uh, trying to, to drag goods from places to place. The roads are still mostly mud, as the rain hasn't ceased up for long enough, and there's not been enough light to dry them out. Some of the main streets are cobbled, though, so at least they're holding together a bit better. <coughs> people seem to be huddled to themselves. The inns and pubs, or rather mostly the pubs, they're fairly full. Seems to be the very popular places. And Sandy's been doing pretty good business at the Three Bells. Well, should we go back to the Three Bells? To dry off a little bit, maybe? Yeah. Sure. Uh, I forgot if I had told the captain if I was going to return later or not. I think he said he needed someone later instead. You can kind of consider that to be always available. He always needs somebody. So if you don't have specific yeah. commitments to that, you can always show up and take a shift. Fair enough. Um, so what's the plan now? Well, the Captain Berendel is worried about Raymond getting in his way all the time. Yes. He works for the too. diamond. And considering his Probably. new cronies seem to work for the diamond. Um, we do need to talk to the captain about that. Yeah. Do you think you can get him alone where we can discuss things with him where he won't be overheard? Yeah, that's my concern. Um... Do you know any place, Silas, that we could go? Um, I mean, we could get it. Hmm. Do any of the inns have private rooms, not for sleeping, but eating? Uh, yeah, there's a few that have, have uh, small. Uh, they can be converted to either. Basically, they have uh, they have beds along the side, which wood can be put over top of to make into a bench. And they can put a table in there and put a, com a couple of extra chairs. Well, are there any restaurants in the town that rich people might eat at and have booths? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, there's, a, there's a couple of very expensive places that uh, 
usually for uh, fat caravan uh, leaders who come into town, get their get their money, and want to have a, a taste of civilization. So yeah, there's a couple of them right by the public market. So, I mean, we... depends on how private you want to get. I guess like we can go to such and such a place, and there'll be booths, but the food's a little expensive. Or we could get uh, a private room at one of the inns. It's not the best. It may not be what you're used to in terms of uh, dining elegance, but it at least would be a closed room. I mean, I'm more concerned with a closed room. Um, I just want some place that hmm, the, the prying ears won't get to. It, it feels if there's a, a more classy restaurant that has like VIP private like areas that would probably be best because it's not asking for something like it's not asking for something out of the ordinary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I know we've got booths. I don't know what else we've got. Worst case scenario, we can just invite him into our room at the Three Bells. That too. I was thinking about that. It depends on how how much you want this to appear as we're having a private talk with him that people can see him walking into, or just we're all going out for lunch together. Uh, yeah. I kind of would prefer the we're all going out to, to lunch. I mean, we could probably just go to a restaurant, I doubt there's going to be many people in there anyways. Um, but what if somebody's following him? Then we'll probably see them in the restaurant. I mean, nobody's really celebrating anything right now or going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and we haven't had a caravan probably in a couple of weeks. What with the constant yeah. rain. So, I mean, a restaurant's likely to be mostly cleared out. Um, yeah, I suppose. I think that's probably the best bet. Okay, Silas uh, can. I'll stop at the three bells and put something a bit nicer on. Just something clean. I'll stop at the three bells and dry off a little bit. <laughs> mhm. Mm well, stepping inside the Three Bells, it is a, a very full tap room. There is some food being served, and you can smell the delights of, of uh, the other sister who's cooking in the back. Uh, but it is quite crowded. Uh, people are a, a mixture. There's a lot of people who are somber and kind of deep into the drinks, but others are, are kind of wildly uh, celebrating. Old songs are being sung up about uh, bountiful catches and... Some of the songs that Silas would have learned and has probably sung here before, uh, sung uh -huh. over enthusiastically by people who can't keep a key on the best of days, and they're not on their best of days. <laughs> but it's warm inside. There's a blazing fire uh, going, uh, and uh, you make your way to your rooms, find something different to wear. What, is, what does Andy change into? Honestly, just something more clean. She probably would have brought her, like, very basic, like, going horse riding type level of clothes uh, as, like, fancy clothes. Okay. So she, she would have probably had her, uh, her nanny help, uh, Helena help choose a few things that would be, like, appropriate as fancy clothing okay something practical but but also a little elevated yeah okay is medrick going to change medrick never changes he slightly steams mm -hmm. a little bit probably yeah he's gonna wash his clothes then steam them and until they dry then put the armor back on so he, he cleaned up but didn't actually change We'll, we'll say he probably wiped off rather than washed his clothes because in yeah. medieval times, that's, you know, a several hour process. <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> Silas will press to digitate his clothes. <laughs> that, yes, that thank does you. work. That is the magical equivalent of instant laundry. 
Dragon is, yeah. is metric uh, sauce are you going to wear your armor to the restaurant why not it's not something people normally do it's a restaurant so it's unlikely we're going to be attacked people say that and that's when they get attacked sure just uh expect maybe the town guards might have an issue uh with you going fully yeah, armed and armored into a restaurant silas is just going to change dinner. his performing robes sorry <laughs> we're having dinner with the captain so well, he's probably going to have his armor uh people don't normally wear armor unless they're getting ready for something or they just want to be extra safe uh, uh like so changed the door, performing it's, robe. It's, and besides the, the the town guard is uh very few and they probably have better things to deal with than making sure somebody wearing armor doesn't go into a restaurant uh, so you clean up a bit <laughs> you change a bit I'd say it takes it probably i don't know an hour hour and a half how, long, how much time do you want to... I, I would imagine an hour is a pretty conservative. Okay. Silas has done like 15 minutes. <laughs> okay. Well, three quarters of an hour. Let's not split hairs an hour, whatever. Uh, you have uh, reassembled. There does seem to be that threat of rain in the air, but it's not currently raining. You can see the flashes of light every once in a while. A little heat lightning probably is lighting up the sky but doesn't change much of the illumination outside you head back outside are you going directly to the restaurant or are you going to go try to find the captain uh well we need to go find the captain so okay uh, you know that he's often been on patrol for the last couple of weeks and you've worked alongside the captain you kind of know the main patrols that he tends to take uh, judging from the time of day, uh, make a, let's call this a uh, survival roll again. It's kind of a weird one, but. Well, he did say that he was going to spend the day doing mostly paperwork, so. That's true. I'm looking at 18, so something like a 19. Okay. Yeah, thinking back on, the, on, on that, he would have already done whatever patrol he's going to do and then would spend the day kind of collecting the paperwork of fines and people arrested and that sort of thing in his logs. It was probably at the windmill. You make your way over towards the windmill. The windmill is actually not far away from the, the restaurant. The restaurant's called the Silver Button, by the way. Uh, and the windmill is just north of the public market. And the Silver Button is just to the west of the uh, public market. Um, and you see there are lights on inside. A couple of the guards outside are uh, standing around chatting. You can see Riemann being one of them. He's wearing uh, kind of light leathers. He has a sword strapped to his side. The other one you haven't seen before looks like a half-elf. Um, they're kind of eyeing you as, you as you walk by. I walk by him. I don't acknowledge him. Okay. I, I just go in. Um, I'm waiting outside, so I say hi to them. Yeah, Riemann kind of gives you the, the summary nod that watches. His eyes are watching uh, Annie as she's striding up. Where's Medrick going? Is Medrick I'm staying outside too. I'll stay with Silas. Okay. Um, Annie goes inside and following her just a few steps behind, Riemann actually goes in aside, leaving the other half-elf guard standing there uh, looking kind of at the two of you. There's some suspicion, um, but doesn't seem to be making any aggressive moves. Uh, kind of pulling his cloak a little tighter around him. And he go inside, and uh, the captain is at his desk. His large ledger spread out on top of it. Uh, he's got a couple of extra lamps that seem to be uh, sitting on his desk, illuminating it pretty brightly. There's uh, somebody in one of the cells. Uh, looks like uh, an old sailor of some kind, snoring heavily. Otherwise, it's pretty quiet inside. He uh, glances up from his his books. Ah, hello. 
Has there been trouble? Yeah. No, we would actually like to invite you to join us for dinner. He's working, you hear from behind you as Remit steps in through the doors. Not enough of us to take shifts that he can just wander off with any little thing he likes. I'm sure the captain can make up his own mind, Freeman. He has a bit of a point. But this would be a working dinner, as I have to inform one of my associates uh, of some of the discoveries I've made in town. Here, Remen kind of stepped by by you. Uh, you've been deputized then? That's uh, of one of the things we're discussing. I've been doing a bunch of work here. I might as well get paid to do it. Huh. Well... Isn't that the day? Reman, uh, you'll stay here and mind the store, will you? I'm supposed to go. You'll be fine. And Reman sort of shoots Annie a glare. Aye, aye, sir. Uh, the captain collects himself, straps on his uh, sword belt. He is wearing his sort of formal armor. Uh, it's not kind of the mm-hmm. full level of heavy knight armor, if you might expect, uh, which he was actually wearing during the battle. He had he had uh, found or he had brought forward some very nice looking armor. You can see the sword uh, glowing slightly in its hilt. As you recall, it's the mate to the sword, to the dagger rather that he lent you to use. Now, He's going to sleep off the night, but he should be released in the morning. He was just found in the wrong place at the wrong time. Right. Have a good night, Reman. Yes, sir. And Reman extends his arm to you, Annie, uh, kind of winking out of sight of Reman. Shall we? We shall. And- uh, I like um, steps out through the doors and closes it and you can kind of feel with his arm kind of linked in yours there's a bit of of, of relief on the shoulders <sighs> it'll be pleasant to and he spots Medrick and Silas standing there oh <laughs> <laughs> it'll be pleasant to have a night out Discussing business, he quickly adds as he notes his other half-elven guard is standing right there, kind of eyeing all three of you. While we were... Yes, we might as well get food. Of course. While we were outside, uh, while we were waiting, Silas would have asked around about the, uh, the soldiers that we had saved. Uh, to see how they were doing. Asking this half half of Lingard then, I'm assuming? If he's the only one around, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Um, um, There's there's a bunch of them that's still uh, recovering some sort of lingering wound uh, burned into them. But it looks like many of them are going to be able to come back to work, which is good because I'm frankly getting tired of double shifts. That's good, good. to hear. Yeah. I'll uh, press to digitate his cloak to warm it up a bit. And he it won't of, last long, but... He draws it closer. Oh, thank you, sir. It's been uh, no, thank you. a rough time. And he kind of looks up at the clouds. Any idea when the weather might change? I mean, I don't know if you know such things, but it's beyond my ken. I don't know, but... Can't be soon enough. I intend to find out. There's got to be some way to get rid of it. Uh, More power to you, sir, if you've got that kind of power. I should be hitting my patrols now. You folks have a good night. Stay safe. Good luck. 
And you see him kind of take one of the lanterns, light it up, and start walking uh, down, basically down the main street. And kind of, you can see him heading for quite some distance because the street is pretty wide and pretty long. Uh, every once in a while, he turns <coughs> the, the lantern from side to side, kind of scans it across the, the buildings, um, looks in a couple of the alleyways, but doesn't seem to pursue anything. And then Annie and the captain emerge. Uh, as much as I like the idea of having a little bit of uh, food and some talk, I'm not sure what exactly you have in mind or where you'd like to go. Um, I suggest uh, I suggest the silver button. Perhaps we could have a good meal and some privacy there. He raised us an eyebrow. The silver button. Well, that's, what's the occasion? There's something to celebrate that I should know about. Morning mm. battle, I guess. It's a private place that we all could go to. Well, that it is. Um, I'm somewhat overdressed, and he kind of taps his hand on his sword belt. That makes two of us. Indeed. And I look at <laughs> Like, ah, I was right. <laughs> yes, I agree. You're overdressed. <laughs> um, well, surely yeah, Silas, they turn away the good captain. Uh, Silas just has a staff. Uh, well, actually, he has the jacket too. So, but just because of the water. Um, I think we're. Uh, he looks over at Annie and. I think we have a few things to perhaps talk about with you. Um, well, if you have some insight, I know you were invaluable on that night, and frankly, I haven't been able to make too much headway since then. But yes, and he kind of looks around. Perhaps we'll find a quieter place to speak. Um, and he kind of starts to walk, and with Annie still uh, arm in arm, uh, kind of leading over to the silver bell, or silver button. He seems to know the place. I mean... He knows most of the places mm -hmm. in town, clearly. I imagine he would. The Silver Button is a standalone building uh, made out of ancient stone, uh, and it really has that sort of ancient uh, look to it. A little bit different from the rest of the city. It looks like it was made um, a lot older than a lot of the wooden shacks or the wooden buildings, and not as crudely made as a lot of the stone buildings. Uh, it has uh, two floors to it. It has a large uh, set of stone pillars on the outside, which uh, for an extension of a, uh, a small uh, roof or Davenport uh, there. There are actually uh, a bit of a, of a porch, if you will, under the extended roof where there are a few tables. Nobody's in those tables at the moment. Um, he leads you in through the double doors, and already you can smell something different. There's some sort of, of uh, burning... Uh, um, herb smell in the air. Something pleasant. Uh, kind of reminds you, Annie, of some of the, uh, the uh, scents they would push through the court when they're having uh, a big party. Uh, something to sort of permeate the air and hold it there. Uh, and it's a little thicker than the air you would have experienced outside and a little more primitive than the stuff you've, you've tasted before or smelled before, Annie. But it still is somewhat of a leavening element. Um, a... Uh, a, an elf in uh, fine robes stands before you at the door uh, with a <coughs> very uh, complicated hairstyle of purples and blues all woven in together. Uh, and he uh, stands there before a podium. Um, party of four, then? You can see a little bit of confusion, uh, looking first at the captain and then at the other people who he doesn't seem to recognize. Silas takes off his jacket and he's wearing his dress robes. So it's a uh, yes, uh, and he'll call the person by name. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Ellerton is the name of the uh, the valley at the door. Uh, I'm afraid, I'm kind of looking at Medric and uh, looking a little bit of a, a nod towards the captain. I'm afraid we do have a strict no weapons policy, but we'll make sure that they're kept safe. Silas hands over his staff. Yeah, I'll hand over the hammer. Okay. 
and the shield too, because of course I would have brought that. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, he he takes them. Elgin takes them. Weapons. What's that? Sorry, Annie. <laughs> I don't have any weapons. People can see. Yep. Uh, the captain hands over the the uh, sword belt, uh, and then hands over a second dagger that he pulls from underneath his his uh, sort of tabard. Um, Elodin takes each of these kind of with a, an extended long hand, delicate fingers, kind of holding them at as long a distance as he can, uh, and, and knocks on the wall. The wall kind of slides aside. You see an orc on the inside that he hands them to. You actually recognize this orc, Medric, or half-orc, I should say. One of the people you served with uh, seems to have found probably the, the cushiest position you could ever nice. imagine. As you can see, this tiny little room inside um, and uh, kind of takes it. You, there's a little nod of recognition uh, and a kind of almost a smirk as well, Medric, as you see. Um, uh, Parado uh, kind of look at you with a bit of what are you doing here? <laughs> kind of, you know, disbelief as well as you must be doing well for yourself. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Elliton uh, writes down on little cards uh, what each of you have uh, and extends one card in uh, to uh, Parado and gives each of you a small card on it in extraordinarily well done handwriting. Um, just kind of saying uh, uh, an inventory number, essentially, so you can claim it on your way out. Cool. There is, of course, um, a two silver cost. Certainly. Yeah, sure. I'll flip uh, the orc of gold. Parado takes it. Tests it just to make sure it's gold. Grunts a little bit. Um, makes out change. Don't worry about the change. I'll just give to a silver because okay. I'm less rich than Silas is, I guess. <laughs> I was flipping a gold that no one else has to. Oh, okay. I would give him a two silver tip. All right. So I will take off this amount <laughs> from my sheet. I mean, put back the amount that I took off. Um, Elgin seeing the transaction is, is seems to be suitably impressed. You've never been inside the restaurant, Silas. You know of it more by reputation. You know that it does have a fairly uh, expensive clientele, and it's it's very well renowned. Um, he gives you a moment to to uh, to wait as he goes inside to prepare your table. The panel slides back, hiding Peridot from sight. Kind of left on your own. They have a very um, a delightful steak dish here. I'm told. Nice. Last time I was here, I had fish, I think. Oh, maybe it was squid. It was something expensive, though. From what I heard, everything here is expensive. I'll whisper to him. Oh, but once in a while, I can't hurt. Modestly expensive. Aladdin comes back out. I have your table for you. Just follow me. And he opens up the double doors to the inside. And you can see that the, the room, uh, there is some common tables on the center parts. On each of the common tables, it's fairly dim in here. There's a candle that's been lit up. There's no exterior windows, um, but there are the, the shapes of windows that you sort of realize either are covered over or they're actually fake windows they have on the inside. Uh, but no one can see inside. You get the impression that they don't want to show everybody. The main room is uh, is uh, elegantly uh, dressed. Uh, each of the tables has not only uh, a tablecloth and some padded chairs that are around it, uh, but it also has what looks like actual silverware. Uh, each of the settings is very uh, well attended to. I, I would mention, I would have mentioned at the door uh, that we were looking for a quiet table. Of course, of course. Um, and leads you through from the main room uh, to a corridor off to the right. Um, will there be any more adjoin adjoining or just the four? Just the four. Very well. This room should do. This is our... This is our salmon suite. 
and opens up a, a couple of double doors to a private dining experience. When they say salmon, um, that apparently is also the decor. The walls have this this warm pink uh, on this on the walls, tastefully done. There are numerous carved wood elements that surround the room. There's a uh, a, a salmon, a pair of salmon, kind of over the door, uh, as if they're jumping out of the water. Um, if you press their middle, they start singing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, elegant place. <laughs> uh, and the 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 backs of all the chairs have a uh, sort of water carved out of wood motif. Uh, again, very uh, delightful uh, place settings. Everything's already in place. One thing that all of you would have noted is you didn't pass anybody in the main room. They don't have any guests at the moment, at least not in the, the common areas. Um, Elodin seats you all. Uh, your waiter will be with you in a moment. Uh, in the meantime, please examine our menus. Now, the menu for the salmon room does have as its most prominent dish salmon at the very top. Um, there's also uh, a numerous other fancier words, some of which you have no idea what they are. It's almost like they picked them up out of random. Um, as best as he can, the captain sort of explains a few of the things. Uh, he says that, I, I'm, I'm not sure, but I think this is an ancient language. Um, but I believe this one is the squid. There are no prices on the menu. Is that free? Uh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry, Medric. Uh, <laughs> they assume if you have to ask, you really can't afford it. That's right. probably true. I have a little bit in my budget and a little bit of saved up, so don't worry about it. This is probably the most pleasant thing that's happened to me in the last two weeks, to be in a room with people that I think I can trust. So the expense is worth it. There's my... Money. Are you sure? Uh, well, don't you go, have money. Don't go too crazy, Medric. Try to keep yourself uh, from ordering everything on the menu. But what I if we it. order each a different thing and split it? That way we get to try as much as possible. Sounds like... Sounds like my youth, Medric. And don't worry, I'm, I'm not going to grab any drinks. Of course you are. And when the uh, waiter mm -hmm. comes back to take uh, some orders in a few minutes, uh, the young woman uh, looks around the table, and he and uh, the captain immediately orders a bottle of red wine for the table. Give I will order a uh, stein of water for me. <laughs> <laughs> water is complimentary for everyone here. Thank you very much. This is the uh, waiter or waitress in this case. I will make sure to come back with a picture for all of you. Thank you. Thanks. So, the wine comes back. It's got a bit of uh, of an old label on it. Um, it's not labeled from uh, Escus. It's actually labeled from... Uh, hmm. Where did I leave my names off with? I want to see this map come up to me. There it goes. <laughs> um, everything's being slow today. There you go. Uh, actually, it's a Volunmarian wine, which um, surprises... Well, most of you don't really know much about Volunmar, but Annie, you definitely do. Volunmar is uh, a very rough island just south of Alaria. When I say rough, it means that the center part of the island is really one large rolling set of mountainsides. There's very little inhabited space on Volunmar and almost all of it around the coast. But the people who live there are said to be the most stubborn people anywhere. And they stubbornly refuse to leave and they stubbornly grow everything. And one of the things that is a surprising product of Volunmar is this Volunmarian wine. Uh, it is extraordinarily robust um, there's a, a very short growing season uh, and it is uh, it's well known to be served at some really good tables the captain asked for it by name 
which gives a little bit of a suggestion of his background. Um, after the waitress comes in again and gets your orders, if you'd like to describe what your order is, you're welcome to do so as a creative exercise, but I won't, I won't stress it to you. <laughs> I, I am probably... getting steak dinner. <laughs> All right, everybody. What? Alex, you go first. Medrick? Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm getting the crab to bris fillet. Okay. All right. I'm going to keep I'd things very light. Um, probably just go with the salmon and uh, salad. Okay. Medrick? I'm going to keep things simple and just go with the steak dinner as uh, Captain Verandell suggested. Okay. Uh, Verandell actually orders the salmon as well. Uh, and the waitress goes off to make your food. Now, as pleasant as this company is, and as much as I would love to talk about simple or trivial matters, I suppose we have more important things to talk about. Mm -hmm. First off, those twins don't trust them. Flip and flax. <laughs> I wish I had much choice in the matter, but they're able-bodied. They do come recommended, although the recommendations are thin. And frankly, there's an old saying, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Right, that part does make a little sense. Still, I am keeping an eye on them. I try to assign them to routes only when I know someone else is going to be on that same route. And when someone else can double check afterwards. When we got here, we got a job uh, helping the farm, uh, the Winchester farm, find some lost cows. And it was them who had stolen them. And they had brought them to this weird abandoned temple. So, and they were looking for something else there. The Winchester farm, seemed you mean? to be working. Yes. Yes, I haven't been out that way myself in a while. Uh, it was them who had been stealing the cows, but also they were looking for something for the diamond. Oh, well, I've heard of the diamond, but I haven't had any, anything more than rumors so far. I frankly discounted most of them. I'm not really sure how real the diamond is, other than a, a name. Well, considering that our group seems to have angered them, I think they're very much real. Mm -hmm. We've heard nothing else aside from the name either. I don't know who he is or she is <laughs> or what it is. So you, you think that the, the bandits are organized under the diamond? At least some of them. We were attacked on our way there, uh, on our way to the farm. Uh, and th we were told that the diamond is watching. Well, that's ominous. And that was because we had helped the three bells with an issue that was apparently being caused by the diamond. What sort of issue? Rats. Yes. <clears throat> well, rats and cattle. I'm not sure how dangerous they sound, other than the fact that they at attacked you. But um, I am trying to find out more about them. As are we. So far, the bandit attacks don't <coughs> seem to have any pattern to them. There was a caravan that came in about a month ago that complained about being harried along the way, but the attacks never manifested entirely. They were shot at with some arrows, but otherwise escaped without any real harm. We have, found, we have found two sets of travelers that were murdered mm -hmm. and dragged off the side of the road. Really? Where and when? 
did this just happen? Uh, well, it would have been a, at least a couple of weeks ago, probably much longer for one of them. I mentioned the one that we found at the Wintrup farm where basically it was just like skeletons or something that were left. So it was a while. And the one that we found on the way to the um, lighthouse. <coughs> And there, I think we actually had some, no, no, the papers were missing from the guy. That was it. Well, I'm glad you're telling me this, but I'm a little disturbed you waited so long. There was a sea devil attack. We had to focus on <laughs> That's understandable. I. We kind of focused on uh, that. <laughs> I feel as I... I owe you all an apology. It's been difficult to know who to trust here. And I have been receiving some um, feedback on my actions. That's, Positive feedback? No. No, it was um, decidedly not positive. And what? Well, I work directly for the Baron and Baroness, but I rarely speak to them directly. As you saw, they are um, a little bit in distress. So mostly the Chamberlain has been delivering messages. And I've been told in so many words to be careful which allegiances I make. It's an uncomfortable position to be in. But I'm determined to do right by this town, as much as I can. Um, but also I've had to expand the guard. But I... When Sir Aswan was revealed to me, I felt like there might be um, another party interceding here. I haven't seen him since then, so perhaps that was not as I expected it to be. What do you mean? Well, I had hoped that some inquiries I had sent uh, towards the kingdom had been had been received, uh, and that I might receive some additional support. But what clearly, sort of inquiries? Uh, I'm very concerned about the Baron and Baroness. The Baroness has been sick for quite some time. That's been relatively well known, I suppose. At least among those who directly work with the, with them. The Baron's recent uh, illness of his own caused me some concern. You can see he's, he's trying to be very cautious about what he says. And his earlier comments about trust seem to still linger in the air. Um, where he's feeling a little bit nervous about talking about this out loud. He takes another swig of the wine. As I am his apprentice. I do have connections. I don't want to use them, but I can see what I can do. And he kind of shakes his head. Uh, I, I fear that if Sir Aswan is not involved, if his passage here was only by random chance. I, I, I'm, I am concerned about moving any further. It's not my place. I have enough to do. There are still reports of shadows all over town. Some of them, I think, are just common thieves taking advantage of the darkness, but there have been... 
early <laughs> sightings, I guess you might say. By the time we arrive, there's nothing to be seen. No one has died, but there's been some harmed. We have been attacked by a shadow at the Winthrop farm. Well, and I have my suspicion they might be connected to the diamond. But perhaps not connected to the sea devils. We don't know. <laughs> it, it seems like there's more than one group. Or... Certain it being connected to the diamond. I wish I knew more about this diamond or this shadow you speak of. I had assumed the shadows were nothing more than magical tricks or misdirection. There's a lot of shadows right now. And yes. at least one thief we did catch. Oh? Uh, a young boy. A young boy just trying to take advantage of things. All he stole was a chicken. We only put him in jail for a night, tried to scare him a little bit. There's no fine that could be had. The boy has nothing. It seems like the best I could do. People are scared. I've thought about issuing a curfew. It's within my boundaries, but somewhat difficult to enforce. I fear for people being out at night, though. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Tell me, uh, do you have any news to share? Uh, there was a lady I helped during the Sea Devil attack. <coughs> She's staying at one of the inns right now. And she said that if she hears anything about the diamond or anything sketch, she'll let me know. Well, I appreciate that. I wish there was more I could do for you, Medric. I haven't had any luck in deciphering what happened at the temple. So uh, Gaetano gave me a bit of information. Where is he? I haven't been able to locate him. He's back on his ship, I, as far as I heard. Oh, damn. Yes, that we not make a big deal about his departure. Of course. He goes where he needs to. Would... But still, I, I've spoken to Dr. Marigold, and he tell, told me that uh, the flamekeeper died by drowning. I assume it was one of those water elementals. Yeah, that's what I'm guessing. And apparently one of the sea devils, the four-armed one, had a horn that summoned lightning. And then the Wrath of Ignis took care of the rest of the enemies, I'm assuming. Yes, well, I suppose. I wish there was more I could do, Medric. I really do. Uh, this seems somewhat outside of my training. I know such magical gifts, and perhaps someday I will find that I have some capacity for them myself, but aside from an inheritance of a couple of useful items, and he kind of looks towards, towards Annie, probably referring to the sword and dagger combo. Aside from that, it's a bit outside of my realm of expertise. You, you did do as much as you could. You helped us during the battle. That was something. It came pretty close a few times, so had you not been there, maybe the Sea Devils would have won. I'm not so sure they didn't. I'm still not exactly sure what their aims were. Clearly the temple was one of them, but I... Down by the docks, what do you suppose they were doing? Trying to destroy the city. They were using the Sunstone as a weapon. Or the Starstone. Their goal was to eradicate the town. So in that they failed. However, they did do seem to have succeeded in some of their goals. And what of the raiding? Why were they going after these places? 
Why were there such petty thefts going on in the middle of all of this? Do you have an inventory or a list of what was stolen? I have a few. Okay. We might want to look at those, because there could be a pattern. We found out something about the vase they were trying to steal. Oh? Yeah, apparently it was, uh... Well, the old woman who bought it from a trader called, uh, Clockwinder. Is that it? It was Clockwinder, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay. From, uh, Clockwinder's caravan some time ago. Bought it because it was pretty, but... There was uh, an inscription on the vase of some ancient conqueror. Anyway, Dr. Marigold was able to read it out to us. Now and that you mentioned it, was, hmm? now that you mentioned it, uh, Medric, uh, Captain, aren't you from New Hiddleston? Um, yes, that's where I was born. Is it New Hiddleston or New Huddleston? Huddleston, because. Yeah, I think Hiddleston is uh, uh, just Loki on the brain. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, dyslexia. I can't read my own handwriting. <laughs> that's fair. Uh, because that, that's where the this clockwinder was from as well. Not originally. I'm familiar with Farvin. He's been all over, so far as I can tell. Bit of a collector of this and that. Never had any direct trouble with him, but uh, he um, has a reputation. He yes, Doctor Marigold told us that he likes his privacy, but uh, we can make deals with him. Yes, well, I have had numerous small complaints and issued a few. Um, fines against Farvin, but he pays them happily, wanting his privacy. The what? complaints have been mostly that people have been trying to pry into his business and came up against his uh, mechanical friends. I see. Hmm. But, it yes, seems I... to be Unknowingly or knowingly selling dangerous artifacts. Oh, I suspect the Clockwinder knows exactly what he's doing. Or at least knows the stories that he's telling. I heard him uh, selling something once. He spoke for ten minutes, giving the entire genealogy of this particular artifact, he called it. And then for the next person, told an entirely different story for fifteen minutes. I'm not so sure of the providence of anything he sells, but I know that his stories are effective. The second person bought the thing for an outrageous amount of money. Something like 300 gold. Whoa. What was the item? Candlestick. That's outrageous. Huh? Yeah. It looked like that interesting, a candlestick, to be honest. But he's a good seller. But he guards himself well. His... Well, he rents a warehouse down by the docks most of the time. He tends to keep to himself. It's patrolled by his curious little mechanical friends, though. Some of them seem quite innocuous, but... I've been told that the toad bites... Mechanical toad? That's what the uh, rather irate and somewhat bruised fellow who came to me asked, uh, told me. I must admit the idea that his ankle was sore because a toad had bit it was a bit surprising. When I talked to Clockwinder about it, he simply said, I like my privacy. <laughs> I've never seen them myself. But I've heard a few stories. Mostly people who've gotten a little too close to looking into his business, I'm afraid. And he has the right to be private. Do you think he's doing illegal activities? I think he sells things for prices that are way above what they're worth. That's not technically a crime. 
And if even half of the stories were true, maybe these things would be dangerous, but I don't think I could believe any of them. I have a feeling that you you might want to believe some of them. Uh, and I started second. telling him about... <coughs> Sorry, I had to cough. It's okay. Uh, I started telling him about what um, we were told about the vase. Uh, I avoid saying the name, but and explain to him what what happened when when Marigold said the name. So you think he sold an Athlonian artifact? I find that hard to believe. As for the name thing, well, I I don't know all of what a clockwinder is capable of doing, but it wouldn't surprise me. No, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Again, magic is not my strong suit, but I'm familiar with it, and I have cousins who've practiced much more than I ever could. One of the things I remember was there were all sorts of tricks one could play on those who didn't know any better. And it wouldn't surprise me if there's some sort of thing about that vase such what then you, when you read it out loud, it has a special effect. We can try that here. I know I wouldn't have brought the vase with me. <laughs> it's right here in my pocket. That's why my pants are bulging. <laughs> Is that a vase in your pocket or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> Is that an ancient Athlodian <laughs> artifact or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> Not saying that there isn't something strange about it, but I've found to be more practical, most things tend to be of a simpler sort. But if you're saying that... You had you were having issues with vases, though, so... Yes. I've done quite the same description as what you've given. All sorts of shapes and sizes, it would seem. None of them seem to have that fancy element to them, though. I'm not sure if that makes it more or less important. But all of them seem to be fairly plain, mundane vases. From the descriptions. A couple of them were um, embarrassed when I asked how much they paid for them, which probably means that they paid far too much. which is probably a similar situation to what we have here. It's just a black vase. Hmm. I'm the afraid Caribbean I... Script. What's that? With a creepy inscription on it. Well, oh, well, hopefully it doesn't bother us. Still, if I learn anything more about it, I'll let you know. As I said, Does most I of them... Have... Sorry, go ahead. Does Clockwinder have any staff that work for him in this city? Uh, there's a number of people who join the caravan every time. I think there's a few of them that join on a regular basis, but for the most part, he picks up new laborers each time from whatever town he happens to be in. All right. Maybe we could uh, meet some of them and they can introduce us to him. That way we wouldn't be praying in his business. Well, I'd like to talk to him about the specific boss, if possible. What was that? I missed the first part. I I'd like to talk to him about this specific boss, if possible, and get its story. Sam? Well, if I were to go after and talk to him, I'm sure that he would not provide me with too many useful details. If you were to go to him, say, with an interest to buy something, he might be more willing to talk to you. That is one, one way. <coughs> Any kind of. I do have some interesting artifacts of my own that I might like to see what he has to say about. You do. Yes, we came across some stuff that seems to have a story, but I can't quite figure it out. Well. 
Farvin likes a good story. So, maybe you can treat him to a bit of his own medicine. It's one way to get get him talking. Mm-hmm. The captain holds up his hand, and you hear the doors open. He seemed to know the door was going to open before it did, and maybe that's just practiced at being a night watch uh, specialist, or, or maybe, who knows. But the door is open, and two or three uh, servants come in and start to deliver the meals. They're all piping hot. They're all fresh. The room is filled instantly with this mesh of tremendously uh, delightful smells, and it's hard to avoid your mouth watering at this point. The presentation oh, is yeah. beautiful. They use, uh, looks like flowers. Even some river stones are used in the presentation of the meals on the plates themselves to give a little extra color and texture. Um, the salmon comes out looking as though it's on a, uh, a bed of rocks, like it's coming out of the water swimming. It's posed almost in a certain way, although it's a fillet. Um, the uh, the uh, crabtopus is served kind of in a bowl. Uh, with it looking as though it's trying to climb out of the bowl, almost an animated form. Um, but in fact, all of the limbs have been separated and the, the shell has already been cracked open for you. Uh, the steak is about an inch and a half thick. Uh, it is... You, you pick up your knife and then you kind of press it into the corner of the steak and it sort of falls apart. Uh, whatever they're using to cook the steak, it seems to be extraordinarily powerful. And it is now so I'm hungry good. in real life. So, yeah, I know. I'm kind of <laughs> hungry now. You know what happens whenever you guys have a restaurant scene. You know this. This yeah. this is a scene where I end up going like way too much in detail about the food. I also blame this on the Food Network. Um, <laughs> but after a few minutes of disruption, the doors close again. And you kind of get the impression that they're used to people wanting to be left alone in a room like this. As they do seem to be fairly heavy doors. Uh, but then you tuck in. I do kind of, during that entire situation, kind of snap kind of back into what I'm used to in what happens in the situation. Very proper, very etiquette, very kind of a slip up. You, you, you notice that the captain also knows which fork to use? Like, this is a, a fairly formal setting where there are, like, four forks on one side, three knives on the other, at least two spoons. There's four glasses in front of you, each for a different purpose. And the captain seems to very comfortably go and move between them all. Um, Medrick, you're finding it a little more difficult, perhaps. And Silas... I'm just, well, I know exactly which one to use. It's the big knife and the big fork. I mean, the other <laughs> one is for decoration. It's just, like, the pebbles on, on the, next to the salmon, right? <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> Especially when you try one of the petals and it doesn't taste all that great, so it must be garnish. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't acknowledge the how kind of like back snap into my job. Do I notice that or am I too obsessed with the food? Uh I think that I think that you're kind of noticing a bit. You both Silas and Medrick you know who Annie has said that she actually is. And you don't have a huge reason to disbelieve that, aside from the fact that it sounds unbelievable. But up until this particular point, there wouldn't have been anything that really gave her away. She dressed more or less like a commoner. She fights fights with a knife in the street. Uh, she is commanding when in a, in, a, in a battlefield, but otherwise sitting back, inquisitive. But at that particular moment... It's kind of believable, this whole notion that she might actually be a princess. Is the captain noticing? Or do I notice the captain noticing? Uh, the the captain seems to be smiling appreciatively, and his eyes have not left any for mo most of this conversation. Partially oh. because she's the one that he's worked with the most, so maybe that's more of a comfort thing. But he seems to be delighted by the salmon. Oh, no, no, no. So, the sea devils. They attacked. They were fought back. 
And honestly, like everyone else around here, I thought they might come back again within short order. Tell me, is there anything you know about whether they will come back? I'm just going to go take my puff. <laughs> and he grabs the puffer fish and breathes into it for a moment. I'll wait until she gets back before continuing the scene. That's fair. So I can just continue with the description of the delightful uh, food. and I feel like there should be more description of the table and its, its elegance. There's a you know, silver lined uh, uh, bowl in the center, which there's uh, kind of um, fresh bread has been brought in, but it's sort of Is complimentary garlic bread? Sure, sure. Um, but served in a silver bowl for no particular reason. Maybe I should have brought the vase, damn it. I could like take a bunch of this garlic bread and bring it back with me. <laughs> In the vase? Yeah. <laughs> I have an ancient artifact which may have contained uh, some sort of, I don't know, uh, ancient remains. Let's use it for a garlic bowl. A garlic bread bowl. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, yeah, precisely. Let's see, what are, the, what are the garnishes? Oh, she's back. <laughs> So to uh, to uh, the captain's question, his almost desperate question based on the way that he asked it, if there was anything he could expect or if there's any reason to expect to come back. Well, they very much wanted to eradicate all of you. So I can't imagine them not coming back at some point. We know where their base is. It's underwater, unfortunately. They didn't, get, they didn't get to keep the the uh, vase either. The vase or the source or the source stone. I know that they had been questioning Gaetano, and he feels bad because he said that it was just a fishing village, and so he thinks that he did give them a bit of hope that they could. Well. Thankfully, we did fight them back, thanks to all of you, of course. They, the destruction of the temple, I mean, that had to have been one of their major goals. Most likely. They seem to have lost one of their best warriors in that attack, though. Well, that's, that's hoping. And the horn that summons a lightning. They were lost? Yeah, I'm not so certain that certain they were lost. It must have been destroyed. Maybe we should go back to the temple remains and look for it. If you haven't found it in the two weeks of cleanup, I yeah, in, in I those... don't think it was there. We we never saw the four armed guy dead. Yeah, his body. I was think never he got away. Good. I think he did what he was there to do. I can try to find out. Um, Silas will look over at the captain and say, uh, how many sea devils were killed in this fight? I know we lost 33 people. How many did they lose? Difficult to say. Um, I spoke to Dr. Marigold about it. He's the one who would have the, the best numbers at hand. I'm afraid the guards were more busy elsewhere, and we were still worried about them having hidden, perhaps, inside buildings or wherever. Some of them surely escaped down to the sewers, as did the water elements that we saw. But we had found a few dozen bodies of the, the sea devils. But some of the guards and Dr. Marigold had told me that some of them just simply dissolved into a sort of blackish goo that itself washed away in the rain. I don't know what that means exactly. And Marigold seemed to say that this was something extraordinary, and he rattled on some theory that I was not able to understand. He said he was going to study it, but he had a hard time, I guess, 
holding on to any of these remains? They had some sort of creature she was using to help them that looked like a black liquid of some sort. Some of the, or a number of them seemed to have this black liquid in them as well. Yes, I noticed a few of them when I've cut them. They didn't bleed as normal creatures did. And there was some sort of substance on my blade afterwards. It wiped off cleanly enough, but uh, I was concerned about that. I thought it was simply, I don't know, some sort of hygiene problem. No, I believe it is a creature or creatures or something like that. Wait, Silas. It was something, it was something that obeyed her commands. Silas, uh, the guard we were talking to outside the tower when we were waiting for, for the captain and Annie to come back, didn't he say that some of the wounded guards had some kind of infection? Uh, they, they had burns. Okay. Uh, when they struck, it burned like acid. Yeah, some of the guards were disfigured from that. Some may never recover entirely. Uh, we've had some success in easing their pain, anyway. There's some things that Dr. Marigold gave out. It's sort of a salve that seemed to calm some of the wounds. It was vicious. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sir, what is being done to improve the town's defenses? Well, I've expanded the guard as best as I can with able-bodied people that are willing to be paid. That was difficult at first. Many people were uninterested in being in the front line. There wasn't any damage to the seawall, at least. And while it isn't a great defense, it does slow things down. Um... I had put in a request with the Baron to add additional defensive uh, elements to the docks, uh, ballista or other guard posts where they could be safe and attack with crossbows. I haven't heard anything back from that request, however. Not anything, actually. Maybe after this attack, the Baron will see it, will see the reason behind the need for ballistas. I mean... I don't know what else could stop that giant turtle. Yes, well, um, we were also thinking about ships. In the state that we're in, one of the concerns that I have, although not yet borne out, but if there was a, a disreputable captain with a, an effective raiding crew, Right now, we would only have a certain amount of defense from that. Ah, yeah. So far as I know, this port has not been attacked. It's too valuable to too many. But if word got out that we were attacked and are under, well, quite literally a cloud, some might take advantage of that. So the ballistas would be mm -hmm. more effective against ships, but no ships have come in for the last two weeks. Still, the Baron did not respond. I know that uh, the ship he was on when he got here was trying to get back, but it couldn't physically get in. I don't know anything about sailing, but I can tell you the winds have been strong. I, I suppose that makes it difficult. I believe we're due for another caravan to come in on the roads, though, so there will be, be a need for ships to travel outward, for commerce to continue. Mark, mm. one of the questions I uh, had was, uh, is my family price gouging? Since they're still making, getting a lot of fish coming in, are they taking advantage of it, or are things going on as just as normal? Um, it's not so much price gouging as they have not reduced their prices at all. They're still asking top amounts, and they are practically the only ones able to still go fish. Yeah, um, as the the small fishing boats have, uh, when I say no ships have come in, that would be the inter uh, island ships. The yeah. small fishing boats and stuff are still trying to go out, but they are not having much luck. So, 
basically in a, in a depressed economy, they're taking advantage of a monopoly. So they're being jerks, but not super jerks. They're being consistent. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, something else I wanted to ask, this isn't for the, the captain in general, but just how has the town been treating us? Have we gotten a reputation from turning the turtle back and whatnot with the town, or does the town just not really care? The three of you in particular? Yes. Uh, in general, word hasn't really spread all that far. Most people were inside. They didn't see what happened. Um, they know that the guards were out in full, and there's definitely been stories of the, of the guards bravely defending, uh, and a few people joining in. Um, there have been some, some um, mentions. Uh, you suspect that Gordon probably has been saying a lot of positive things. Gordon was the guard who uh, defended on the docks for as long as he could, finally fell, but you revived him. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Do they remember that we were the ones riding around warning them to stay inside because it was going to be dangerous? Uh, there is... Yeah, there'd be, there'd be a bit of recognition about that. Uh, most of the reaction would be kind of warily looking wherever you travel, as in, are they going to warn us again? Um, that would have worn off after the first few days when nothing had happened. Um, make a, um, hmm, what do we want to call that? Make an investigation roll. Put it that way. Uh... Where did, where did my character sheet go? <laughs> character it's gone. Sheets. It appears like it just disappeared, so let me it, pop that back up again. It appears to have disappeared. It unappeared. Six. Okay. Um, you, you're you well, pretty well known in many parts of this town anyway, and they still know you. There seems to be nods of recognition, but nothing particularly special for treatment. Yeah. Um, as far as Medric, Medric is well known because the temple that he was dedicated to burned down. And people yeah. have seen him out working on cleaning up the temple area. But they're also kind of wondering whether he's going to attract more danger. Nobody really talks about Annie. Um, Annie is stealthy. There, there is, there is sometimes where it's, it's that that other person that was with them, uh, except for Lysandra and I forget her other name, the other one, uh, and of course Sandy always has a a good word to say about the three of you, um, correcting people once in a while in the three bells when they're going like, well, no one stood up for the town. It's like, well, you weren't paying any attention then, because I know three people well, who actually. stood up. <laughs> kind of a well actually. Well, yeah. <laughs> So there's a little bit of a, of a reputation of it, but it, for the most part, it feels like um, people were so scared uh, and they still feel kind of shocked. Sure. Even though they were forewarned, they they didn't seem to pay attention to it till the last minute. Sure. Um, Silas will look over at Aunt, uh, at uh, the captain and then over at Annie at one point and say, so Annie, are you a guard now? I don't know. I've just been helping where I can. If it would help things, I would appreciate if you are willing to be deputized. That would mean regular shifts, however, not just filling in where you can. I, I may can't have... stay here permanently. <laughs> no, of course not. But I may have another solution. Mm -hmm. It's not an often done thing, but... I'll have to make sure I dot my eyes correctly. But I believe I can designate you as a special investigator. Especially where you're already familiar with what happened to the town before. You had some foreknowledge of it. 
if I can get Sir Aswan's uh, approval on it, I think I can make it semi-official. Um, that would give you some freedom, a little bit of, of well, legal authority, and a small stipend. Cool. That would be useful. I'm afraid I probably can't extend the same to you, Medric or Silas. Um, I suppose, Medric, you're the flame keeper now. I guess, except there's no more flame. Oh. If I find out how to light it again, or if I can carry the flame from elsewhere, I'll bring it back. I would need the Baron's approval to rebuild the temple, though. Would I? I suspect Silas so. was coasting a mushroom off of Medric's shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> I think that you'll need any uh, need approval to rebuild anything. I would, in normal circumstances, say that wouldn't be difficult, but right now, with the Baron not responding to many requests, it might be difficult. You can take it up with you said, hmm? the Chamberlain might that? be able to pass on that message. If you can find her. And as for right. you, Silas, I'm afraid uh, the position of your family makes it somewhat difficult for me to officially align with uh, any member. And I must say that oh. you are different from the rest. That's fine. Uh, my family would probably have issues were I to start working for the town. I'm afraid I must ask, too. Forgive me for this question, but out of completeness, I must ask. Silas looks at him wide-eyed and isn't. Your family didn't have anything to do with this, did they? In any stretch? In any, in any part? No. My family had members in the town helping to protect people. And you're sure of that? Yes. Oh. But if you, are to, if you ask them, they will deny it. Deny they were not part of it? They will deny that they were helping the town. Oh, well. I doubt anyone would believe them anyway, to be honest. Sorry. Uh, your family's reputation is um, one of a lot of solitary and self-protected uh, acts. That is not uh, inaccurate. Still, it puts me at somewhat of ease for you to reassure me that they had nothing to do with it. It does make me wonder if they have anything else to do with anything else happening in town. Nothing that I know of. Good. I hope it remains that way. So You said the Baron was ill. For how long has he been ill? It's difficult to say. I mean, I've only been here myself for a little over a year. I met with him a few times when I first started. He seemed fine at that point. But you witnessed just as I did when last we saw him. He seems to be afflicted by some... some disease of the mind, I suppose. Or, uh, or he can't speak for himself. A rigidity of body. I, I don't know what caused it. But I... I first saw signs of that some four or five months ago. And not long after that, it was the Chamberlain I was dealing with rather than the Baron or Baroness themselves. The Baroness has been ill as long as I've been here, one form or another. I wonder if I could help him. As you know, I I know ways to heal people. I would hope that you could. The fact that he has not asked makes me wonder if there is some concern about the Temple of Ignis being involved. 
I suppose I can only offer. When I meet with the Chamberlain to request the permission for the temple to be rebuilt, I'll just slide in the offer. I think that would be prudent. Frankly, it worries me. But having heard no response to my requests, I can only assume that full confidence from the king and queen are in the baron and baroness. And there's nothing I can really do to question that. I have to assume that. And do my duties and protect what I can of this town. When about did you send that? A few months ago. Three, I think. No, no, me having, like, in my studies and learning about the what's going on and keeping up with what's going on in the kingdom. Did any of this come across at all? There are missives sent to the crown all the time. Um, yeah. And there are concerns all over the kingdom. Some of them big, some of them small. Sometimes the people themselves are trying to appeal a tax code imposed by a local lord. Sometimes the lord is asking for more enforcements because they're trying to push through a tax code, which is necessary for the area. You know, both sides kind of come up all the time. So you wouldn't have been privy to any particular one that came up. Fair enough. Also, it would be probably pretty dull. And I can't imagine anyone to spend your time going through all of these really dull, very formal, very busy body kind of notes all the time. Not that you, you would don't. want to, you'd have to. <laughs> you don't know career bureaucrats. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that Annie's not one of them. Let's <laughs> put it that way. <laughs> she looks forward to her job and she wants to do a good job, so she would pay attention to it. She just would be like, can I, can I just go far now? Well, and, and <laughs> I mean, even the king and queen, they don't read them all either. They have a team, and the team exactly. is a filter. Exactly. So, um, but yes, I, I might have to end up doing something about that. This is any thinking, not any <laughs> And she chooses Push the papers in our favor. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, what else do you ask for the day or for the evenings? I don't think I really I have anything more for the captain. The Vays, the twins, what happened and going forward. Um, I think those were the main things we wanted to talk about. Okay. Otherwise, it's a pleasant um, meal. There's a second bottle of that wine, which is ordered. It pairs pretty well with the salmon, but extraordinarily well with the crab tipus, of all things. You wouldn't expect a red wine to do that. But there's something in the, the, the bitter notes that bring out the, the, sea, uh, the sea qualities. It doesn't go bad with the steak either, but the steak itself is just sort of extraordinary filling. It's one of those meals that, for a soldier, you would get something that big just before you're going off to war. Or just in case I never have anything else afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Silas, Will, the Silas Will tell them stories of uh, the crab to first fishing, mentioning that uh, what's on his plate is basically a, a baby crab to us. Uh, and the large ones are upwards of, uh, of uh, like the size of a large person with like eight foot tentacles and a hard shell on back and uh, how dangerous they are to uh, to fish. And they have claws. Little pincer claws at the front. Little or large? Well, little compared to the rest of it. Yeah, I suppose. Tell me, is it true that, that some of the tentacles and some of them have a large 
hook, almost like a single finger. Sure. <laughs> Look at the one on your plate. Does it have one? I mean, the, the, there's very little hard bits left. Okay. The hardest part is the shell, which has already been split open. And probably because it was a, a, a juvenile that was harvested specifically for it still being soft. I don't know if you've ever had... Um, Basically, crabs by the bucket. If you if you go, I've gone to to Baltimore before, where you go to a, a crab shack, and they literally serve them by the bucket, and you just put them on. You have a, a thing. You have a you have a, a table with a tablecloth, which is usually just a plastic sheet over the top of it, and you just mound up the shells around you as you eat. Yeah, it's a thing. It's is a it thing. in other states, like say Georgia? <laughs> I'm sure it's elsewhere. That's the only place I've been that For I. For the next time I go to Dragon Con. <laughs> <laughs> anyway isn't Georgia landlocked no no it's on the side it's on the east okay. side cool and now it's a blue state <laughs> and anyway let's leave <laughs> let's leave real world politics out of this uh, but the meal goes well there's a okay, small so the, the, the real world discussion is explained as in like Medrick mumbling because that line is really good <laughs> something about a, uh, what, what was that sorry thanks for the wine man uh, the the captain seems to be uh, happy to celebrate with you. Talks a little bit about his own history. Uh, he was uh, a uh, has always been a guardsman. Um, served for time in Volenmar, which is how he knows about the wine that was there. Uh, describes the people as the the sternest people he's ever worked with, uh, but also the ones that told the most wicked jokes without smiling. Um. <laughs> And he's kind of he's been working for quite a long time, and this was a, an opportunity, because here he is the the uh, captain. Here he is the head guard head guardsman. So it sounded like a great post, and for the most part, it hasn't been too bad until recently. Um, when did Riemann come to be a guard, or was he there before? Riemann was there before me, and for the first few months, he was pretty quiet. But he's been asserting himself continuously. He's a very old guard, uh, meaning that he knows what he's talking about. He can be very, very useful, but he can also be very, very trying. So he was quiet until four or five months ago? I don't think there was a specific date. Okay. I was just wondering if started asserting himself when the troubles began. About the same are you time. Sure he's, are you sure he's not a, uh, in with the criminals? I would hate to assert such a thing, especially without evidence. And certainly he's brought in his share of, of people into the jail over time. But who was it that, re who was it that rep recommended the twins? You said they came highly recommended. Yes, there is a local businessman who vouched for them. Who? An Alphonse Meyer. He owns, um, I think it's a, 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 a clothes making shop. Uh, Taylor. Yes. What was his name again? Like, player question. Alphonse Meyer. Oh. <coughs> it was in M E Y E R. Yep. M E I L L U E R. Okay. Meyer. Okay, so maybe Raymond had nothing to do with it, and he just mm. took his recommendation. I have my own difficulties with Raymond, and as I said, he can be trying at times. I'm not entirely sure where his loyalties are, but he's never done anything directly to harm me. Question just about everything I've done, and I suspect that he expected to be next in charge of uh, this area. 
As I said, he's been working here for a long time, and I'm not surprised at the resentment. I haven't yet been able to overcome it, but I'm not surprised. Unfortunately, that first come, first serve isn't usually how it works. No. Silas looks over at Annie and says, no, usually it depends on bloodline. Riemann's not a noble, is he? I don't think so. I'm not a noble either, although my family is rather prominent. Wealthy. We have some means. I didn't go into the family business, so it's um, a little, little different for me. What was the family business? Hedge fund managers. <laughs> uh, yes. And yes, they did exist. Every time I hear hedge yeah. fund, though, I'm just imagining some sort of wealthy gardener. Uh huh. They're storing all the money in the hedge. Yeah. Scholars. Uh, yeah, Silas has everything else. Scholars for the most part. Um, My um... sister runs an academy, and my brother is a researcher. My mother teaches youth. Uh, my father does something with magic. I've never understood it. It wasn't for me. Cool. Can he do and this? I, mean... I make a I, I make a little. Uh, I make an illusion of like a a tiny battle between uh, sea devils and guards uh, on the top of the table. <laughs> I'm sure he could. I doubt he would do it on a dinner table. In fact, I'm sure he'd be sneering at it at the moment, but that's all right by me. Ah, he's a wizard. I get it. <laughs> and I mean... Silas doesn't really know, but that's what he's been told. <laughs> well, I have a lot to do with things all the time. For example, I'm story his throws when he used to work in the Captain North. So. I missed a little bit of that. Yeah, same. Uh, she's basically saying that like bloodline doesn't always have to do with where you, where you end up in the ranks because of the the rumors of uh, how Sorosund ended up Sorosund being taken in by the king off a pirate ship. Oh yes, yes. Um, yeah. Always have, doesn't always have to do with bloodline. I wonder if Sraswin is familiar with the Baron, then. The Baron was a sea captain for many years. That's possible. Is this ship already departed? I get to meet him sometime. Well, if you recall, uh, Gaetano left with two of, or three of his crewmen who had walked to town from the place where they had docked the ship far to the south. <coughs> it was a couple of days walk to get back. Okay. And yeah, he's left for that walk already. Did you were planning on going? Uh, he didn't say where, no. They were going to have to decide that when they got back. Yeah. I'm still here. <laughs> Just taking care of the lighting situation. <laughs> So the Baron used to be a captain, you said? Yes. That's me writing things down. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Think he might. He's... That might be why he suggested uh, Maybe. I believe he served in the Navy, specifically under the King. Interesting. There, That's a possibility. There are rumors, ones I've never been able to verify, but there are rumors that he has his own dock still. I don't know where it is. It must be on the edge of Cape Raven, if anywhere. But I, I can't see how that would actually work. Uh, 
After a while, they serve mm-hmm. dessert. There weren't any choices for dessert. It feels like it's sort of like what the cook has made that day. Uh, and they're small. Uh, here's where I get to show off my food network knowledge again. They are basically uh, a small, what are called petit four, which are, are uh, small little square cakes um, with multiple layers of jam and then poured over with chocolate. Um, they're one bite cakes, and there's four of them on a plate. Um, and yeah, yeah <laughs> it's kind of a one bite <laughs> dessert. Um, and they are uh, scrumptious, very, very sweet. Um, but kind of give you that relaxation after a very hearty meal. Now, as pleasant as this has been, and truly this has been the most pleasure I've had in months, I do have to get back to it. I do have a patrol later on today, and if I don't check in every once in a while, I'm sure that Riemann would have declared me missing or perhaps have just mounted up the paperwork on my desk. I wouldn't be surprised. I will yeah. uh, make an effort tomorrow to get the paperwork necessary together, Annie, if you'd like to join as the special investigator. It would have to wait until I've gotten authorization. Sir Osmond could do it, I suppose. Um, or I can submit it to the Baron, but I'm not sure how quick or if at all he'll respond. The Chamberlain might be able to deliver it, but I don't know if they would be invested in the response. Sir, Sir Usman should be fine. Well, let's hope he returns quickly then. And hopefully. If we find out any more information about anything, about the diamond or anything threatening to town, where's a good private place to meet? I'm assuming we're not going to have fancy food every time, as unfortunate as that is. (laughs) As much as I am proud of the stipend and the savings I have, I could not afford this every week. But, um... I'll give my patrol schedule to Annie. Approach me on patrol. It's probably the safest. We can find a quiet place to hide at that moment if we need to. To hide? What have I been reduced to? We can find a quiet place to talk. Uh, it's probably the safest. It's Sorry? All right. It's what it feels like. I'm afraid I'm feeling somewhat of the pressure of all of what's going on as well. And with the bandit attacks, as frequent as they had been, although relaxed for the last week or two, perhaps also responding to the strange changing nature of the local area, I would not be surprised (coughs) to find them surge again. Also, as things become more difficult, if we don't get more ships in, the caravans don't continue... A lot of people are going to be very nervous about what they have. Uh, and nervous people get desperate. Mm-hmm. They do indeed. But, and he holds up his glass, to, to better times with friends. Clink. Silas holds up a glass of water. Clink. Pretend this is a glass. Did you pick up a glue bottle? No, it's sanitizer. Oh. 70% rubbing oh, alcohol. How very 2020 of you. <laughs> and with that, the meal is yeah, finished. <laughs> I think delay. It's just, you know. Yeah. Uh, anyway, with that, the, the meal is over. As uh, mentioned, um, he takes care of the, the, the bill. He doesn't tell you how much it is. Um, he just disappears with uh, uh, Elodin at one point uh, and then says it's taken care of. Your things are returned to you, undisturbed. Uh, Parado seems to be just as bored of the situation. Although, Medrick, you know this kind of facial expression. It's the, it's the expression of, I'm doing my duty. I will do it to my utmost. This is utterly dull, but I will put on a face of passivity and not betray that but you can see it in his eyes it's like there haven't been that many people in there side what's that <laughs> the retail dead inside kind of yeah, <laughs> kind of, yeah. and you, you also get that impression that's kind of like that lock eyes moment uh, between uh perido and, and medrick of 
I will miss wearing a sword. I miss swinging that sword at people who probably deserved it. But... So if he swung my hammer around in the back room, then whatever. Yeah. I hope he did. At the very, at the very least, when he picks it up, he's kind of got that natural, you know, the natural weighing it for, you know, how, how well balanced is it and kind of like, you know, you can see the half swing, but doesn't actually swing it, just gives it back. Thanks. My pleasure. Is that Perigo is in the gem? I'm not familiar with the gem, so maybe. P-E-R-I-D-O-T. Uh, no T. Okay. Uh, you're muted. That, that's Peridot. Yeah. It's pronounced Peridot. P-R-A-D-O. <laughs> He's called Peridot, regardless of whether the stone is called. <laughs> I, I've heard it. I might have heard it from the French, so I don't know. <laughs> This tea was so silent, watched, he dropped what? it. <laughs> so, it's been a few hours. You come out. The uh, captain kind of marches off towards the, the station where his horse is actually at uh, being housed as well. Uh, leaves you for the evening. It's a little bit darker. But again, this... I do joke that I want that horse. <laughs> You joke with him that you want his horse? That, that, that I want the horse you promised me. Ah, that can be arranged. <laughs> um, it is a little bit darker, but at the same time, the consistent darkness that is maintained, it, it only gets deeper. It never gets really that much lighter. It's ironic that we happen to be into the winter season here, so we all probably recognize this kind of uh, early darkness that kind of we're experiencing at the moment, but even even uh, more shadowed. That rumble of thunder has turned a little bit more. <laughs> that rumble of thunder has turned a little bit uh, quieter, but now you can feel the the cool breeze uh, and the salt smell of water being blown off from the seas. Probably going to rain shortly, and even as you start to walk, drops start falling on your heads. At Saturday, we. We may want to continue this conversation elsewhere privately. Definitely. Yeah. Three bells? Sure. We can go into one of our rooms. Yeah, that should be reasonably secure. As you march off towards the three bells, the rain becomes a little thicker here and there. Uh, heavy, large drops start spattering. You hear that sort of sound everywhere until the whole place is kind of hushed under the sound of it. This, the Three Bells is up ahead. You see the, the warm lights uh, coming from inside. A couple of people stagger out. And when I say stagger, they, they started this morning and now they're just coming out to try to get home before it gets too, too dark and wet outside to uh, a, a young man and young woman kind of leaning against each other uh, trying to make their way out. They almost walk into you uh, and then kind of apologize and stumble along. Just as you reach the doors, they swing open. Well, the one door, I should say. The bright light silhouetting uh, someone standing on the threshold. Can't really make them out because the darkness you have on your side and the bright light behind gives them nothing but shadow. But after a moment, a familiar voice uh, calls out to Silas. Silas, is that you? You recognize the voice as your cousin's uh, husband. I'm just going to scroll that down here properly. Is that Luther, the guy that's teaching me the guitar? That is Luther, or... yes. Okay. Hi, Luther, what's up? And he kind of charges towards you um, and almost falls into you, stumbling a little bit on the, on the, on the mud. It's, it's Mira. She's gone missing. I need your help. Where did she go missing? She left sometime this morning. She has been feeling odd, and... She went into the woods. Outside of... Outside of... Outside of our homes. Hmm. I didn't want to... I... I couldn't... 
speak to her mother, her mother's Odiga. Yeah. But I, I think she's in trouble. And I don't think that her mother understands. Um, I think I know where she might have gone. I, not exactly, but she told where? me about it. She saw it in a dream. What did she see? And she he glances over at Annie and at uh, Medric. She has been dreaming of the mother. I think She's being told by the mother to seek out something. An old temple, half buried, far inland. But she told me how to find it one day. And now she's gone. I think she went there. It's not safe. Silas, there are people in the woods. There are creatures out there. We we have to find her. And I, I will find her. The mother will keep her safe. The mother will keep her safe. Describe to me where she would... Uh, describe... Uh, tell me what you know of the path. And he'll give you detailed directions, which we will pick up next time. Sure. Um, As you, I bet you it's that temple we were at. Would it be possible for us to have our discussion before we end? Uh, you certainly can. Uh, I am going to have to hit the washroom, so I'm going to be absent for a moment or two. Me too. Uh, but Bathroom break. <laughs> we can break for five minutes, then and come back. All right. In okay. The, I just meantime, like to get that out of the way so you know where we're going. Sure. In the meantime, Annie and Silas can uh, can vamp for the next five minutes. <laughs> hmm. I mean, she's just kind of thinking over what she can do to help so. yeah see part of the problem is that uh like the land outside the family holdings is a little dangerous and silas doesn't have survival or anything useful like that <laughs> he's a townie yeah i mean so is annie mm. Uh, yeah, her survival is one. Yeah, I think his is the same because it's wisdom based. Yep. And uh, yes, sadly, uh, his wisdom is not. For me, really, really good. What's that? <clears throat> but I can convince things, people to do things really good. Yep. Yeah. That's the problem with only getting two skills to start with for the for uh, for Silas. <laughs> yeah. All right. I have returned. Hey. Yeah, I realize this hoodie makes me look more like some cultist than an actual cleric, but it's like if I'm like this, then it, it's like my head just blinds everywhere because the, there's no cover on the light. <laughs> Or maybe, you do maybe it means I'm just like that. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> I missed your uh, comment, but it was funny because you. Uh, you do look more priestly that way. This what way? With, yeah, what with the black. All you need right. is like a little white tab at the front. The white tab can just be like my pasty white skin. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Oh, I have to put them up, but actually, I have a, I get a new picture done for Silas. Cool. And George did one of uh, Mother Hydra as well. Ooh. So we got his uh, his creepy sea goddess mother figure. Nice. I can't wait to see that one. Okay. 
Sorry about that. Okay. So presuming that you've had some discussion along the way, uh, there isn't really anybody outside. You've seen a few of the guards on patrol, but that's kind of the only people that you've seen. So you can have some privacy and have some parts of your discussion anyway. And we, I mean, Annie would be hesitant to talk too much because we've noticed people watching us a lot. Yeah, and we have to yell over the rain. <laughs> what? Silas has a big hat that's getting lots of like. <laughs> you could huddle in an alleyway like all respectable citizens. Uh, um, I mean, before we leave, Annie would insist on getting changed uh, at the very least. Well, how about this? The way that we'll set this up is you will have gone to your room to have that change and have that talk. And when you come back to the common room, that's when the person finds Silas on the inside. Yeah. Sure. So instead that's of being shadowed by the darkness, they're coming in a soggy mess, having bust open the door. Hmm. The and I do insist that he heads back to town and, and Silas will handle this. Uh, but first, Silas has a, we have a bit of a discussion we have to finish before he can figure out how I find my my cousin, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, we should probably retire to one of your rooms for a little more privacy uh, after I manage to uh, get Luther to head back home and uh, well, that'll happen afterwards. So you have your discussion, and then afterwards, okay. they will come to you. Sure. Um, so, yeah, when we're... Silas will perch on, like, the edge of a bed or something. I'm assuming the rooms aren't too uh, much... Well, three people. It's going to be cramped, but, I mean, we're not, we're not all sleeping together, so they... It can accommodate three people for sure. Oh yeah, I'm just saying there's probably like a bed. There might be a chair and a little table or something. But yeah, yeah, I, um, I, I would a room that has like some sort of desk or something that can be used as a desk. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, yeah. Silas, um. The, I tried to find out from my aunt who these foes that she had spoken of that the clan was going to handle were, and she gave me the runaround. Sounds like the military. Uh, yes, that was above your rank. I'm supposed to be the one who leads my people into the future. I should be told this. And it may be that she doesn't trust me. I don't know. But I think I need to go talk to Catherine. Yeah, she's been awfully quiet lately. Or maybe to the mother. I have to talk to, there's got to be or someone both. who knows more. What's that? Or both. Yes. Um, so that's something I, th that, that I need to do anyways. Um, I, the storm is not affecting my family. It stops at the edge of the road. So whatever magic is holding it here seems to be holding it on the town. Uh, it stops almost exactly at the edge of the road and goes no further. Um, but the storm itself feels natural not like it's a magical storm so 
if we could find a way to end the magic holding it here, it should pass. Not that I know where that is, but... Do you know if it relies on some kind of object, and if we break the object? I don't know. If it's some... I, I mean, it could be some, for, some sort of ritual, uh, but... I mean, I, I magic normally doesn't last that long unless you've got some way of, of maintaining it. Uh, but it may just be that it's above my level of knowledge. I have some learning in Arcana, but that's not strictly the magic that I do. So I'm a little out of sorts here. Um, we could check the sea devil's sunken uh, place again. I have a way to allow us all to breathe for much longer than the pearls allowed. Uh, we would just have to avoid the poison ferns. Wait, wait uh, you remember the, the uh, entrance without the poison? That's thing is, right? We'd have to use that, yes. Um, but I can, I have a, a way of allowing us to breathe for the duration while we were down there. If we wanted to check that out. Um, Kill any more sea devils? Uh, Just because it'll make us feel good. I'm okay with that. Does killing people make you feel good? Killing bad things makes me feel like I'm doing my duty. Do you, do you think anyone that does bad should be killed? Well, okay, let's... Any consistently evil creatures. I mean, you're the sea devils. They wanted to wipe us out. There is that. I'm... I'm afraid, something, you know. I'm afraid I'm not much of a killer. But I do understand that things have to be stopped. I mean, I used to not be much of a killer, but ever since I joined the military, it's sometimes it's kill or be killed and do what you got to do. That is its nature, yes, I guess. I think I try to heal as much as I can, but yeah. And Annie... What do we do about you being the... And then he drops his voice down and moves in closer. Sec secret heir to the entire kingdom. Uh, I mean... What we've been but if something happens to you, that's going to be bad for us. Yeah, how do we break the news? Uh, Silas, that, that's your that's going to be your job, by the way, if, if anything happens, which hopefully it won't. Well, we have to make sure nothing does. Uh, yeah. Um, if, if nothing else, make sure that you can keep my body. Someone, there, there are clerics for that. Yep. We will have to keep you away from Marigold. <laughs> <laughs> Especially now that uh, Gaetano does know where I am. Uh, make sure that you keep my body and contact him. Uh, okay. Ignis can help with when this. I, Hopefully he won't have to. I will say, when I left, I just expected to visit and talk to people. I did not expect to be dragged into fighting and physically protecting people and putting my life in danger. That was that was not the plan. But how, how long are you staying, Annie? I mean, I've been gone what, a month now? 
month and a half. It's been about a month, mm -hmm. I think. Cause we had two weeks of downtime, and there was a little while before that. <laughs> so it might not even have been a month. It's probably just over a month, I think, in total, with travel and all that. Yeah, well, with the travel to here, we had two-ish weeks of downtime just now, and we had about a week before that, too, so. Um, I don't know. I was thinking a few months just traveling across the islands, but I've been staying in one place a lot. <laughs> so. But I feel like I've been helping and able to help here. And that's what's important, ultimately. Yes, I, I, I believe so as well. Um, yeah, Silas just kind of looks down at his hands for a bit, and and uh, um, at the so end of the day, my, my goal was always to learn, and I'm saddened to see what I've learned. Mm. So, what do we do next? Do we go to Cathron? Do we uh, look into the vase? I might be able to see if the anyone in the clan has like a criminal contact or something. Maybe they know something about the diamond. I will admit that my family is occasionally involved in smuggling. Um, I, mean, I mean, Catherine might know something about the bases. Yeah. Yeah. She didn't know about diamond last time. She didn't even... know about the diamond, but the bases might not be of him. No, no. I think there's something separate i mean maybe he knows about them but yeah i don't they're probably something and different maybe silas's I family knows something about the bases the other day sorry annie what's that i don't think i told you guys about the dream that i had right before everything oh I don't the think shadow so. no i out of character no i don't think you told us anything about it um, uh, so I would kind of bring that up. So is this a spirit that's after you and your family? I don't know. It, it did offer to help during the battle. So I don't know. Hmm. Something else to uh, wonder about. But I think that's why I think that the shadow is connected to the diamond. Uh, sorry, why do you think it's connected to the diamond? I don't because remember the, the actual dream. It was the shadow, but his eyes were diamonds. Ah, okay. Literally right there. <laughs> Or maybe the shadow calls itself the diamond. I mean, that, that could be possible. Mm. Um, I get the feeling that there are a number of occult or supernatural things interested in the town. I. I did not get a good feeling for the Baroness. I think there's something going on there. There's the diamond, the spirit. My clan, although I don't know what, I don't know if my clan's looking for anything like about that. Um, if only there were a way to contact people without knowing exactly where they are. Huh. I'm afraid it's not something I can do. And I say, except for short range, I say inside both of their heads. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> it, uh, yeah. You contact people. Do you have to know the people? Probably. Who are you thinking of contacting? I don't know. You... First, I, I didn't get where Gaetano was going, so I need to let him know that I need paperwork from him to be able to more easily get around doing things. And also that I kind of lied and said he was my mentor and not Sirkon Rova. Um, just um, so that he knows. <laughs> yeah. With... Um, hey, you get on the table. No. Okay, you do not <laughs> dig in when I tell you to get off the table. <laughs> oh, cat. <sighs> Um, it doesn't make any sense, but ever since the temple has been destroyed, I feel like I can feel Ignis's influence more than I could before. And I can do things I couldn't do before. Mm. I may be able to contact somebody at a distance. That would be useful. Can you, like, write a paper that I can read off of with what you want to say? Um, sure. Uh, and I'm not sure. Player... What? I, I mean, as a player, I'm going to basically, I'll get that to you in the morning. Uh, I'll figure out what I need said. Yeah. As yes, uh, Pat the player, yeah, just looked up the spell and it's like, yep, that's in the right level. Yep. <laughs> I just uh, forgot if Eric's got it or not, and it's like, oh shit, they do. Yep. Yeah, that's what Emron was doing all the time. I honestly was wa just watching Critical Role and like Laura is going on and on and on and on and on and on. <laughs> Yeah, usually they, count, usually they count hers out. But like the first few, it's, yep. it's, she's just going and everybody's like, they're, they're, it's cut off. Yep. <laughs> um, uh, so where do we want to go next? Uh, I mean, if you want to meet with the Baron, we have the coffee. Uh, that could be a a gift to the nobles in exchange for a meeting or something or favors. Uh, I mean, that's usually not how it works. We'd have to well, I've always heard to bring a gift with you. It's it's helpful, um, but usually out of the blue. It's usually usually that's when there's an open court like to verbally say tell your grievances mm. uh, more than just showing up yeah so so what do we want to look into next do we want to uh Do, are we all going to Cathron? Uh, do we want to split up? Uh, I think staying that... together is a better staying idea. Do we have to go to Cathron or do we have to walk all the way back to the temple? At the farm and one of us here. Mm. I think to speak to Cathron, we'd probably all have to go to the temple. That'd be a few hours ride anyways. Um, and what about that ring, uh, Mark? How far away is Thurin Hall from Elfodder? Um, probably looking at the better part.
part of a day's travel, not like 12 hours, but the daily yeah. travel. It's basically the next way station along the, the King's Road or the Royal Yeah. Road. I think we may just want to sell the ring to a trader or something. And it's a bit of a trip considering everything we've got, to, got going on at the time. Um, going on right now. Uh, he just looks over at you two. Where do you want to go next? And you're muted. Yeah, Catherine seems like as good an idea as anything, honestly. She I might agree. be able to tell us more about the what's going on with the bases, at least. Sure. And I have some questions about about my people. Okay. Um, do you want to head there tomorrow? Works for me. Yep. Then we go out and get ambushed <laughs> by Luther. I mean, less ambushed and more found. Mm-hmm. But yes, after you have your discussion, you come back down to the common room and Luther comes through the door soaking wet, makes his plea to Silas. And we'll pick up with that particular thing and he'll tell you more about what he knows next time. But for now, I want to thank you all for playing. Thank you. For Thanks joining for me. running. And uh, we shall pick up, I believe, in one week's time with no further delays. I think that we're, we're finally back on schedule. The health concerns and life concerns and all those things, of course, uh, always on the table. Uh, but otherwise, uh, hopefully you've enjoyed uh, catching up with our players and with our characters in their strange town of Elthwater, the terrible, terrible town of Elthwater and all the things that are going wrong at once. Uh, and, uh, yeah, you can find out more by going to the YouTube. If you're watching this live, you can on Sundays at roughly two 30, we were a little slow getting started this week, but I'm going to blame the time change last week for no good reason. <laughs> uh, but normally on Sundays at two 30, you find us at twitch.tv slash ENCAF one. And, uh, later after that, you'll find us on youtube.com slash ENCAF one. Look for... You can look for the Legends of the Drowned Isles Super Playlist, which includes all the previous episodes and the currently on hold campaign. Uh, or you can look for The Great Confusion, L-O-T-D-I, The Great Confusion, which is this little masterpiece. Uh, and uh, let's see, I will try. I've been very bad so far at adding articles to our World Anvil site, but I'll try to get a few more up there. I've got to decide on what they're going to be, and I've got to figure out their, my writing schedule to get those up. But if people have suggestions, I'm all, all ears for those. Otherwise, again, thanks to my players. Thanks to you for watching. There are sirens going on outside, so I think that means it's time to come to an end. See you guys next week. Bye.